Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video. We're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. We're going to talk about Wizards of the Coast. We're going to talk about Dragonlance, one of the most popular campaign worlds in D&D history. And we're going to talk about Margaret Wise and Tracy Hickman and some drama uh, around the series which has been canceled or the movie that's been canceled and uh, you know the whole situation going on with them and the Dragonlance IP. As I understand it, Margaret Wise has been on fire on Twitter the last couple days. I think now that the show has been canceled, uh, she's been kind of let off her leash a little bit and she's dunking on 5e in the current state of D&D. &D. And I think that's hilarious because a lot of us old heads are not fans of current year Dungeons and Dragons under Wizards of the Coast, under the Hasbro conglomerate. And uh, it really does not feel like the D&D &D of yesterday. Um, I guess you can call me a grognard. I, I don't really care. We're going to talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And if you want even more pop culture, news, views, and rants. We're bringing the d podcast back. Go out to Spotify, go out to Amazon, go out to iTunes. These are more in-depth interviews with people who help create the stuff that you love. We have more in-depth interviews talking about video games, talking about pop culture, and even talking a little bit about the paranormal. So if you go out to d please give us a sub out there. It's going to be a weekly podcast, probably you know, 45 minutes to an hour and a half conversation. We're going to have a different guest on every week. Maybe I could get Margaret Wise and Tracy Hickman. That would be, that'd be pretty interesting. I don't know if they'd be allowed to talk to me, but let's, um, let's look at this. So as I understand it, and I'm not like super into the nitty gritty of what's going on uh, at Wizards of the Coast and at Hasbro. I know that I don't like current year Dungeons and Dragons. Um, the community has gotten very, very weird. I've, I've done multiple conversations about that. And Hasbro doesn't even you know, seem to think very much of Dungeons and Dragons other than Baldur's Gate because they laid a bunch of people off. Right before Christmas, they laid a bunch of people off and most of those people worked on Dungeons and Dragons. To Hasbro, D&D is just another IP in their portfolio. It's kind of like Disney when they buy a company and they just absorb that company and presumably that company's customers into their hive mind. That's what Hasbro views Dungeons and Dragons as just another property under their uh, watchful eye, like the eye of Sauron, right? So anyway, um, there was a little bit of drama. I guess I need to, to walk this back. Uh, a couple of years, and I do remember covering this. There was a little bit of drama that there was a lawsuit against Wizards of the Coast was Margaret Wise and Tracy Hickman, creators of Dragonlance, creators of Kryn, again, one of the most popular campaign worlds of all time. And um, they wound up dismissing the case. I don't know if they did it because they wanted to get residuals from this upcoming Dragonlance TV show. They got canceled, but whatever's going on now, they don't seem to be holding back. At least Margaret Wise is out there on Twitter, uh, uh, dunking on 5e, which is fantastic because I think 5e is terrible. I, I don't think it's Dungeons and Dragons. I think it's very much its own thing. It's for a, a very specific audience. But yeah, they had this lawsuit a couple of years ago, and uh, apparently they were not invited to participate in the TV show. And uh, I have some very good friends who are still following Dragonlance and they're not real happy with the new books. Um, you know, so a lot of people not happy. And apparently the game's not selling real well. And that's why I, I opened with that, that screen. You can find the Warriors of Kryn board game at pretty much any Ollie's for 10 bucks. This was a $100 board game. And a decade or two ago, I think that this thing would have sold out. I think it would have been a huge hit. I think Dragonlance was a huge hit, but uh, I think they've decimated this brand. And as I recall, Wizards of the Coast were making new Dragonlance expansions and uh, Spelljammer expansions, and they weren't contacting the creators of those properties. Now, contractually, they probably don't have to because those trademarks, that, that property does belong to Wizards of the Coast now. But I would argue that ethically, morally, 
they should reach out to them. And the same thing has happened with Ed Greenwood, who is the creator of Forgotten Realms. I don't think Wizards of the Coast reaches out to him very often. I could be wrong, but I don't think they do to ask his input on these uh, multi-million dollar properties that they're developing using the Forgotten Realms, including the movie, including Baldur's Gate. I don't know if he's getting a financial compensation for that, but by God, he should. I believe he should. I believe R.A. Salvatore should get money every time they use Dritz. They drag him out. I think that, that he should get money if he's not getting money. But given that he's not even getting money from Lucasfilm these days, apparently Lucasfilm stiffed him as of a couple of years ago. You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. But um, before we get to Margaret Wise's tweets, let's go out to where Dragonlance is at right now. So we know the games are on clearance. Uh, there was a, uh, a blowout of Dragonlance board games at Ollie's, and now uh, Joe Manginello, I always mangle his name because it looks like Manginello, Joe Manginello, I think that's how you pronounce his name, Manginello, uh, his secret TV project is dead, and it was Dragonlance. This is coming from Polygon. So Margaret Wise, who with Tracy Hickman is responsible for the beloved Dragonlance Chronicle series of Dungeons and Dragons novels, has confirmed to Polygon that a secretive project to create a streaming television series set in the world of Kryn will not move forward. The news broke Wednesday at comicbook.com, included an emotional interview with its champion actor Joe Manganiello, True Blood Justice League. Everything happened exactly as he said. Wise said in an email, the rumor is floating around that a pilot was actually filmed. That did not happen. And Joe doesn't say that it happened. The project never got that far. Um, they said rumors of a live action English language adaptation of the Dragonlance setting have circulated for years now, but things came to a head in early 2023. That's when Manganello, I think it's, is it Manganello? I hope it's Manganello because that's Joe. I'm going to call him Joe. I think it is. I'm all, I'm terrible with names. I really am. Um, I am. But uh, he, he said speaking during a D&D live stream presentation seemed to indicate that he was working on a Dragonlance TV project in earnest. On Wednesday, he confirmed to comicbook.com that the project was real and that wasn't moving forward following the sale of Hasbro's uh, E1 Entertainment arm to Lionsgate. Again, I want to I wanna take another opportunity. I know people get mad at me for this. Uh, I liked Honor Among Thieves. I did. I, I, I expected to hate it, but I loved it. Uh, I held off a long time on watching it because of the people associated with the show going on about how they were going to emasculate men. And it was, you know, uh, kind of anti-male and all stupid stuff. And I'm like, no, it was actually just a really fun movie. And if they had just marketed it as a really fun movie, I would have been on board. But I deliberately didn't watch it or didn't go to the theater to see it and held off on watching it, uh, you know, streaming for, for months because of that. So it's amazing, you know, when you have people out there doing anti-marketing and basically telling their audience to piss off. Plus the movie came out, you know, when this whole OGL 1.1 debacle was going on. That was that was a whole thing. So it just really left a bad taste in my mouth all the way around. I'm like, I don't want to give these people money. I don't want to give Hasbro money. They sent the Pinkertons to some guy's house because he opened a box of cards early. Like, what the hell are you doing? I don't want to give you guys money, but objectively, the movie was actually pretty good. Now, I don't think Ed Greenwood got any money for it. I could be wrong. You know, maybe maybe it's like Star Wars. We did a video yesterday where Kathleen Kennedy gave Anthony Daniels a cookie as his parting gift from the Star Wars franchise. Millions and millions and millions of dollars sold in C-3PO merchandise, and he gets a damn cookie on the way out. Just ridiculous. <laughs> but anyway, um, maybe maybe they got a cookie. I don't know. Yeah, so Tracy and Margaret were all about it. Uh, Joe said the project, which had a completed script for a pilot episode, the actor clearly in mourning said there was a 1,000-page lookbook created featuring concepts or arms and armor, as well as a unique take on the franchise's iconic dragons. Sounds like they put more thought into this than Amazon did in Lord of the Rings. I even offered, wow, I even offered to buy Dragonlance from Hasbro, he said. But they wouldn't sell it. Instead, they'd rather just you know, park it, park it in Ollie's, I guess. Damn. That's awesome. I mean, that would have been cool because I know he's big into D&D, &D, right? He's part of like the Hollywood D&D &D crowd. 
Um, in addition to the sale of E1, uh, he pointed out to the lackluster performance of last year's Dragonlance Shadow of the Dragon Queen Adventure module following a fractious, fractious legal battle. Over a new series of Dragonlance novels, neither Hickman or Weiss were invited to participate in its creation. And it shows. Again, I have a friend who still follows Dragonlance, and he said it was awful. Uh, Manganello, clearly frustrated, also said that the module was weighed down by what he calls a failed board game, Warriors of Kryn, uh, designed by Hasbro, uh, Hero Quest and Risk Legacy. I guess um, that's what they did. But it's, it's yeah, $10. $10 at Ollie's. It was a $100 set. Last we heard, Paramount Plus was said to be working on a D&D streaming series with E1. It's not known if it has anything to do with Dragonlance. I doubt it. I honestly could see them just using the most, like, vanilla... Well, no, they'll use, they'll use Baldur's Gate is what they'll do. You know, I would say they would just do, like, Greyhawk or something. But they'll probably use Baldur's Gate. Because they're going to look at it and be like, well, the game sold well, so we'll just make a Baldur's Gate show. And Baldur's Gate is D&D from now on, basically. That's, that's what they're looking at. Fans still have some exciting new content. Uh, Dragons of Eternity, a third volume in the Dragonlance Destiny series, is due out August 6th. So they're still doing the books. They dropped the lawsuit. Anyway, so let's, uh, let's move on to the digs at Wizard, the digs at Hasbro. This is Tracy Hickman from about a year or two ago. I thought this was funny. Reject modern entity. This would be a modern D&D group. Embrace tradition. Again, with a classic group from the Dragonlance books. And he had to apologize for that. Just like Ed Greenwood was kind of forced to apologize on Twitter because he retweeted the wrong things or something. I mean, this is, this is who is playing these games now. This is who D&D is for. They basically courted the Tumblr crowd. And this crowd is offended by anything. Orcs are racist. You can't use certain terminology in the game because it might offend somebody. They've got sensitivity readers going over every D&D book that goes out. It's a freaking joke. It really is. Uh, you know, I have no interest in playing anything that Watsy puts out, but it might be a moot point because they fired pretty much everybody that was associated with Dungeons and Dragons. It's possible that they just sell off or outsource the IP. I could see them maybe selling it to Paizo or something or uh, outsourcing it anyway, licensing it and just being like, yeah, you guys make the books. You're, everybody's jumping ship to Paizo anyway after the OGL debacle. You guys make the books and we'll just focus on licensing or whoring out D&D and Dragonlance and Forgotten Realms and Spelljammer and everything but Dark Sun. We will whore out everything that we own except for Dark Sun because that one's too problematic. And we'll just have other companies make it. So anyway, let's go to Margaret Wise as of like yesterday. From DragonlanceNexus.com. Tips for running 5e Dragonlance. Looking for tips on how to run Dragonlance in 5e? Margaret Wise says don't. Don't. Just don't do it. Ouch. Uh, she goes on to say Dragonlance 5e, to quote Malcolm Reynolds, may have been the losing side, still not convinced it was the wrong one. So Matt Barton, who is into D&D, apparently, Man, I'm loving this. Weiss is one of my favorite authors along with Hickman, but I'm curious what you think about a 5e Dragonlance. Why or why not? Give me specifics. It's a long story and it's been told before. Uh, it has been told before. Yeah, basically, they were not invited, as I understand it. I could be wrong. But as I understand it, they were not invited to work on these projects. They were not consulted. Uh, it sounds to me like... Hasbro is holding Dragonlance hostage. And the sad thing about it is this was Margaret Wise and Tracy Hickman's like personal campaign world, right? That's the story. That's what I understand. It was like their campaign world. And then they turned it into books with TSR. And then um, it became a campaign for Dungeons and Dragons. And then, you know, of course, TSR got sold to Watsy and Watsy got sold to Hasbro. And now we're living in this you know, end stage capitalist, you know, kind of scenario where Hasbro owns like everything you loved as a kid between Hasbro and Disney, like everything you loved as a kid. One of those two companies seems to own it now and they're holding it hostage. I mean, it looked like there was an offer to, to buy it out. 
that uh, Joe Manganiello was going to try to buy Dragonlance off of Hasbro and they won't budge because they might, you know, someday strike gold with it. They might someday make a video game that's as successful as Baldur's Gate because they don't have anybody there currently that can come up with anything as good. That's what's so depressing about it. This is where they're at right now with Wizards of the Coast. Nothing they're coming up with current year is as good or as recognizable or as bankable as the Forgotten Realms and Dragonlance and Ravenloft. They have to keep going back to these things. They even try to resurrect Spelljammer. You know, uh, they can't come up with anything good current year. I mean, there hasn't been anything like truly remarkable about Dungeons and Dragons in what, like 20 some years now? Like when you think D&D, like pretty much everything that they're doing, everything that they're recycling, all the characters, all the the, the uh, recognizable monsters. Yeah, I'd say Tieflings, maybe they're kind of a newer thing. At least it's, you know, beyond when I played heavily, Tieflings weren't really a thing. But you know what I'm saying? Like, Everything that was created back in the day, the Beholders and the dis- Displacers and the Realms and Waterdeep and Kryn and all of that stuff. That's what they're strip mining now. Owlbears, you know, they're not really coming up with anything new. You know, they keep going back to the animated series from the early 80s. They haven't moved beyond that. They just keep strip mining the same things. Hasbro, Wizards of the Coast, they are creatively bankrupt. At this point, they're just milking what they own you know and they'll they'll have somebody come along guarantee you and it might even be larian it might be the developers of the forgotten realms games and they'll strip mine crin too and they'll make a ton of money and margaret wise and tracy hickman won't get a penny from it which is disgusting you know i mean it is but this is what happens when you dance with these corporations unless you've got a damn good contract uh, a lot of times you're going to find yourself not making any money. Like you're better off doing it yourself or working with a smaller company, uh, you know, than, and TSR was back in the day, TSR was a smaller company, but they got gobbled up by wizards and then they got gobbled up by Hasbro. And, uh, yeah, it's just a damn shame. It really is. And, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, Dungeons and Dragons died when wizards bought it. It stopped being D&D. It stopped being TSR or D&D. But thankfully, we can go back and play those modules, read those books again. We don't have to buy anything new. Um, it's just a damn shame. It really is. It's just like everything else. It's like everything we grew up with, everything that had an impact on us uh, as kids and teenagers, uh, you know, it, it all winds up in the same place. You know, it all winds up at, in the uh, Disney or Hasbro landfill. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the, the Disney and Hasbro landfill literally is Ollie's. So everything that we loved eventually winds up at Ollie's where it collects dust. Maybe we're just getting old. I don't know. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later.